Hello, welcome to today's devotion. Uh, last time we talked about Paul quoting specifically Psalm 68 and what that means. And now as we go into the later part of that chapter, we look at verse 17. As we go into the devotion today, let's begin with prayer. Lord, thank you for your word. Your word, as the prophets say, does not come back to you without accomplishing the purposes for which you have sent it into the world. And so, Lord, we thank you that you've given us this faith to be able to hold on to the truth of your word and pray that as we go into your word today, you open up our hearts and minds to further understand your, your glory, your goodness, your victory, and your love. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, last time we talked about uh, Paul's understanding in terms of Christ's victory over the rebelliousness that is in our nature, human nature, how it came to be, how we are God's family, we are God's human family, to be um, to work in conjunction which, with God's spiritual family. Um, that was in existence before we were existence. That's why Paul can also say, do you not know that at one day you will judge or rule over angels? And you go, what does that mean? Well, that's all part of this worldview that Paul has as he writes that we've lost um, over the years. But, but, um, but is very much um, behind everything that he writes. So now we're taking a look at verse 17 of chapter four, where Paul says this, therefore, I say this and testify in the Lord, you should no longer live as the Gentiles live in the futility of their thoughts. They are darkened in their understanding, excluded from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them and because of the hardness of their hearts. They became callous and gave themselves over to promiscuity. Well, that's an interesting translation, but okay. Um, for the practice of every kind of impurity with a desire for more and more. But that is not how you came to know Christ, assuming you heard about him and were taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, to take off your former way of life, the old self that is corrupted by deceitful desires, to be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and to put on the new self, the one created according to God's likeness in righteousness and purity of the truth. Therefore, putting away lying, speak the truth, each one to his neighbor, Quote, because we are members of one another. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger and don't do not give the devil an opportunity. Let the thief no longer steal. Instead, he is to do honest work with his own hands so that he has something to share with anyone in need. No foul language should come from your mouth, but only what is good for building up someone in need so that it gives grace. There's that word again to those who hear and don't grieve God's Holy Spirit. You were sealed by him for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, anger and wrath, shouting and slander be removed from you along with all malice, and be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving one another, just as God also forgave you in Christ. Now, this is very profound. As Paul started to talk about in chapter 4, that there is a unity now, a unity among God's family, the hu those in this world, those human beings that have responded to the gospel, recognize the truth of it, that, that recognition is actually a miraculous or supernatural work of God's spirit. In other words, it's a work of God's grace. If you remember, God's grace is the power that uh, allows us to do what we cannot do on our own. And so there's this oneness that results then in this transformational process of 
becoming a new creation. And I love that word, new creation or new life. Um, Paul talks about this frequently. In other words, the original cre creation, our original nature, was not one that, um, that distrusted God. It was not one that rebelled against God. It was not one that would be jealous of one another. It was not one that would degrade another. It was not one that practiced deceit and lying and manipulation. It was not one that practiced seduction. It was not any of the nature which is common to human nature today. And as such, the new creation will once again take on those aspects. And he talks about what they are. Um, that um, speaking the truth in love, being renewed in our minds. The, the, the point that is very important to understand, however, is that as we go forward in becoming new creatures, that we don't fall into legalism, that these are not legal codes. Because if we do, it will burden us to the point of exhaustion. We can't do it. It will create people that are bitter, people that are resentful. And you know what? It's easy to do if, if uh, you fall into legalism. And yeah, I don't know, maybe you've known of various Christians that were very judgmental, very bitter, very resentful. They weren't happy people. Why? Probably because they fell into legalism. The point of what Paul is talking about in, in living a new life is not to necessarily do these things, but to become the kind of people that naturally do these things. In other words, when he says, take off your former way of life, the old self that is corrupted by deceitful desires to be renewed in the spirit of your minds, it's not a legalistic mandate. It's a practice that allows us to become the kind of people that naturally bear the fruit of the spirit. And how do we do that? How does that process take place? Simply by spending time with God. The more time we spend with God, the more his very presence transforms our lives. And you don't want to turn that into a legalism. You don't want to say, okay, I spent an hour today in Bible study. Therefore, I know as soon as you start quantifying it, you start falling into legalism. And this is the danger that Jesus talked or commented on and, and actually rebuked the Pharisees for. It says, you Pharisees, you have this legal standard. Your intention is great. You want to be very righteous people. And so you focus so much on the do's and the don'ts and quantifying your behavior and quantifying it according to God's law and so on and so forth that you become obsessed with performance rather than transformation. And you become, in the words of Christ, whitewashed tombs. On the outside, it appears that you look really good because you're so focused on behavior as compared to to being transformed by your nature. And so he says, on the outside, you look great or it appears that you look great. It's all whitewashed, but on the inside, it's rotten. And so the point, the, the, the danger for anyone that is pursuing um, discipleship and following Christ and growing in Christ is not to fall into legalism because it will end up being worse for you in many ways, but to realize that God is doing the transformational process simply by us being in his presence. It's his work. And the more we're in his presence, the more that grace begins to flow through us. We begin to recognize it. We begin to trust it. We begin to rely on it. And as such, it gives us his peace. It gives us his breath. Even when we don't feel, and this is the very, very important reality that we need to deal with. We cannot base our faith, that reality of the kingdom, on our 
feelings because there will be times where we feel like we are not making any progress. There are going to be times in which we feel as if God is not hearing us or our prayers are of no avail. There are going to be times when we feel like God is not doing anything in our behalf, like we haven't gone and progressed in any way, shape, or form in our Christian life. Those feelings are real and they will occur. But he who is within us is greater than he of the world. And he of the world, which is tr uses our feelings to try to discourage us, is not greater than he who is within us. That gives us a faith that no matter how we feel, we still choose and direct our lives according to God's presence and the truth that he reveals in his word. There's more to be said to this, and we'll get into it next time. In the meantime, thank you so much for tuning in today. And I pray that today's devotion was meaningful to you as we continue to live our lives. Um, and until next time, God's peace. Bye-bye.